Hi. In this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to take your code that's been written in R and put it inside a function, which is going to help us when we come to do things like sensitivity analyses later on. So what I have here is pretty much the same model that we worked on a couple of videos ago. The only difference is that I've now taken these numbers uh, and instead of putting them in directly to this uh, transition probability matrix, instead, I've created variables to hold these values and then I'm filling in the matrix bit by bit. Now you can see what's quite nice is because we've used um, the names for these dimensions, so we've got a name for each row and a name for each column, we can write out our transition probability matrix entries like this. So um, the transition probability from healthy to diseased is given here and that's been defined up here as p underscore healthy underscore diseased um, and i've done a similar thing further down with the payoff matrix which shows the costs and the qualities in each of those states what we do is we initially just fill the matrix with zeros um, and that way we don't need to fill in those zeros we only have to deal with the non-zero entries. So just to show that this works, I'm going to click source and that's going to run everything in here. Okay, that's run now. Uh, so let's show you what we've now got. Um, the reason why I didn't show up everything down here is because I didn't say source with echo. So I'll just clear everything and this time I will source with echo. Right. So now it's shown us every command that it's run. And it's given us the results that we wanted right at the end. OK. And in our environment, we can see it's filled up all of these things. We can take a look at that transition probability matrix to show that it's still doing the things that we expected it to do. Likewise, that payoffs matrix. Um, but as I said, the point of this particular lesson is to take the code that we had before and to turn it into a function. So we want it to be a function of the parameters of the model. And I would say that these things here are parameters of the model that are going to change as we do sensitivity analyses. These things here are not really going to change. So this is the number of time steps we're doing. Uh, this is the number of health states that we have. This is um, the size of the cohort that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these things and turn them into a params list. So this is our list of parameters. So I'll call it list. It's called params and it's a list. Okay. In a list, I can't define things with these left arrows. Instead, each of these has to be an equals, and I have to have commas in between the entries. And I don't actually need one right at the end. And let's give that an indent. Okay, so now instead of having these parameters, I'm going to have just a list which contains all of them. So if I just run that particular line, got it here, I can show you what params contains. It contains all of these things that we had before. So now instead of referring to P healthy diseased, which is still there at the moment because I haven't cleared my environment, instead I would need to do params dollar sign P healthy diseased. Okay, that's fairly simple. Um, but I actually am going to be a bit lazy now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say model is a function of some params. I'll put a dot in front of it just to make it clear that it's different to this params. Okay. And then I'm going to select the whole thing right the way down to the bottom if I can. and surround it with braces or curly brackets. Okay, so if I try to run it now, 
it's still not going to work once I've cleared my environment because I'm not actually doing anything with this params. So what I could do is everywhere I've used one of those parameters, I could go dot params dollar sign or being lazy, I can just say with dot params do all of this. Okay, and there we go. So we've now matched all our brackets up. Probably let's do some auto formatting um, to make it a bit clearer. So now if I run this, it's not actually going to give me any results because it's not going to run this model. All it's going to do is define a function that can run the model. Uh, so let's let's take a look at that. So let's view. We're going to clear out the environment. So everything is gone. Right, we're back here and we're going to source this with echo. So sourced it with echo, but no results have come through. If I want to actually run the model, what do I have to do? I have to type model params. Okay, and that's it. It's now working. Now, one of the things that you will need to consider is whether you actually want it to be um, producing this as the only output from the model or whether you want a number of other things. So what you might do is instead of doing it exactly like this, you might say, I'm going to return a list of things. And one of the things I return is going to be this. Another thing I return will be something different. So, you know, let's call this um, summary results. Uh, but then I'm also going to return that payoff trace because people might be interested to see that as well. Okay, so now if I run it, so I've now uh, replaced the function with the new definition. Now when I run it, I get those summary results, but I also get this payoff trace, and I can do what I like with those. Okay, and the cool thing about this is that if I want to rerun the model, but with a parameter changed, all I have to do is change that params list and then I can rerun the model. And as we get on to do things like sensitivity analyses, you'll see how this is a really helpful way uh, for us to work with R.